second things I'm going to inform is we have a little bit of amendment in the agenda. It's just one amendment. So for this first speaker, our speaker has decided to call off his speaking slot. So we only have three speakers today instead of four. Subsequently, for the evaluations, we only have three, four evaluations, including table topics. So this is the amendment for the agenda. All right. Thank you so much. And let me stop sharing my screen now. So good evening, Feli, um, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to University Malaya Toastmaster Club meeting 318. So before I start the meeting, I would like to get consent from the floor again. I already get a consent to record. Good. And here are some ground rules we'd like to you to follow during the meeting. Number one, keep yourself muted when you are not speaking. Number two, Toastmaster International doesn't prohibit any types of content, but be aware of audience diversity and sensitivity when giving speeches concerning politics and sex. Number three, you're encouraged to keep your camera on throughout the meeting to give support to the speakers. So with that, I'll pass the floor to Club Vice President Education, Toastmaster Min Kang, for his opening speech. Over to you. Thank you, Min Kang, the ASAA slash the Zoom Master of the meeting. So ladies and gentlemen, now we are not only in the back to school season, as everyone's going back, preparing to go back to university and school, but also in the season of patriotism. We have celebrated Independence Day three weeks ago, and we celebrated Malaysia Day like last week. But I know for sure, for me, I didn't even celebrate my the those events from my heart. Should I really care about these like these events? I should, but would I? No. I believe some of you have the same feelings with globalization and current issues. The words. The words patriotism and nationalism, flag waving, hashtag I'm a Malaysian, those words are moving away from us. So they seem whack to me right now. Subsequently, they are replaced with words like emigration, like miserable, corruptions. Do we participate in a country of skepticism or do we participate in a country of hope? Today's meeting theme, the Malaysian time, reminds me of the attributes of Malaysian that we are proud of. Maybe you are famous of the uh, the on the way thing and the uh, uh, just give, just give me five minutes thing to the complaints that we all hate but love to do. I'm curious to see what's one thing you like about Malaysian. Maybe you can share it out in the chat box. For me, one thing I like about Malaysian it's the quality of forgiveness and assurance. So when I am frustrated and nervous, I've always friends would say, Hey bro, you can do it bro, chill lah. When I do something wrong, they will say, Hey bro, it's okay man, it's not your fault, steady lah. Although deep in my heart, I know it's definitely my fault. But the chill lah and the steady lah save me from falling into the valley. Now I really hope this chillness and steadiness could be brought into the whole nations. So instead of avoiding a problem, we give assurance the solution. Instead of pushing people into the valley, we forgive. So we could finally, finally see waving flags on the streets and uh, hashtag patriotism, hashtag I love Malaysia, hashtag I'm a Malaysian back in the social media. So we could finally be proud again to be a Malaysian. So now we have a couple of guests who help in the meeting that I would like to have. Knowledge. We have Natalie from Manash University Toastmaster Club. We have Alif, Ibrahim, Arthur, and Hilman from Cyberjaya Toastmaster Club. Jacob from UTM Toastmaster Club. Yuwon from Mujaya Toastmaster Club. As you can see, we have a good spectrum of people from all over the clubs coming together to make this meeting success. Welcome, welcome, and thank you for coming. I hope this thing is going to run at full tilt. And now I'm going to pass the floor to TME Toastmaster Guy, the long lost Toastmaster Guy, to conduct the meeting. Over to you, Toastmaster of the Eve. 
Thank you, Toastmaster Min Kang, for his wonderful introduction. All right, so now I'll be sharing my screen. All right, just to confirm, can you guys see my screen? Yes. All right, nice. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I would like to welcome all of you to attend UM Toastmasters Club. Oops, sorry, this is the wrong slide. <laughs> all right, once again, I would like to welcome all of you to UM Toastmasters Club 318th meeting. So I will be your Toastmasters of the evening, Goy. So for today's theme, we would have the Malaysian time. So as fellow Malaysians, I believe that all of you here are very familiar with this phrase, on the way. So looking at the current situation, we would estimate that we would be able to hang out with our friends at the Marmot store sooner or later as our economy is gradually opening up. So when speaking of hangouts, most probably some of our friends would still be on the way at the promised time. And also not just for hangouts, when you attend those big ceremonies, normally the VIPs will still be on the way at the time that the event is supposed to start. So this kind of on the way, or rather the Malaysian time culture has been engraved in the Malaysian norm. So this isn't necessarily a bad thing as Toastmaster Ming Kang has mentioned, this kind of Malaysian time attitude has actually shaped a lot of Malaysians to be more tolerant, to be more accepting of others' mistakes. However, I believe that this kind of culture should still not be promoted and should be challenged. And we should bring a change so that we Malaysians would start to arrive more on time and start to being more punctual. Because I believe that being punctual is not just an act of being on schedule, it also shows that you are respectful towards the others and also being committed toward that particular event or cause. So without further ado, let us get this meeting on the way. All right. So for today, to change, to shake things up a bit, we won't be having a word of the day. Instead, we would have a phrase of the day. So the phrase of the day today would be at full two. So Everyone here is encouraged to use this phrase more often during this meeting and the grammarian will provide more background on how to use this phrase later on. All right, so for the benefit of guests, I would give a brief history of Toastmasters Club. So Toastmasters International was actually founded by Ralph C. Smedley and the first official Toastmasters meeting was held on October 22nd in 1924 at YMCA in the US. The purpose of Toastmasters is to help the members to build up their competence and confidence in communication, leadership, and event planning. To this day, Toastmasters has served more than 364,000 members in 145 countries with more than 16,000 and 200 member clubs. And among those clubs, we have us, UM Toastmasters Club. So UM Toastmasters Club, or rather known as UMTME, UMTMC, sorry, was started as an initiative of Chitra to help the students to polish their speaking skills. It was later established during a demo meeting with Mid Valley Toastmasters Club and MAICSA Toastmasters Club by Dr. Stephanie from the Faculty of Language and Linguistics. So every Toastmasters meeting would require role players to monitor the various aspects to ensure that the meeting could be run smoothly. So today we are lucky to have four role players to check out the various aspects of the meeting for us. So firstly, I would like to invite our R counter for today, Toastmasters Arthur, to explain his role. Hello. Good evening. Could you guys hear me? Yes. All right. Greetings, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. The purpose of our counter is to note words and sounds that are used as a crutch or a pause filler. By anyone who speaks during the meeting, I will listen for overused words, including and, well, but, so, and you know. I will also listen for filler words, including are, 
ng and er. I will also note when a speaker repeats a word or a phrase such as I, I, or this means, this means. At the end of the meeting, I will report the number of times that each speaker used the, this expression. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Toastmaster Arthur, for his wonderful explanation of his role. So next, we would have our grammarian for today, Presentation Mastery Level 2, Toastmasters Jacob, to explain his role. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Okay, so I'm the grammarian for today, and my main job here is to note the occurrences of the phrase of today, which is, let me turn off my camera. Okay. So I believe it's visible right now. Okay, so my job is to note on the usage of the phrase of the day, which is none other than at full tilt. Okay, so what does at full tilt actually mean? Okay, wait a second, let me pin myself. Okay, so as you can see, uh, in my virtual background right here, at full tilt means with great force, vigorously, energetically, strongly, powerfully, or the formal definition from Collins Dictionary to move with as much speed, energy, or force as possible. So here are the some of the synonyms for at full tilt, at full speed, okay, at full st steam, at full swing, at full sail, and at full blast. So you can use these phrases interchangeably in your speeches and it basically means the same. It is at full tilt, which is with great force. So some of the antonyms for at full tilt include losing steam. So how do you use at full tilt in sentences? Here are some of the examples. First of all, meanwhile, the factory's production amidst all the negative changes continues at full tilt. The celebration was at full tilt or in full swing when we arrived. Okay, so please use the phrase of the day generously throughout your speeches. So apart from the phrase of the day, I will be monitoring the English language usage throughout the meeting and I will take note on the good English usage and the flawed English usage as well as provide some of the suggestions and comments to amend some of the flaws. Okay, so that's all from me. Now back to you Toastmaster of the evening. Thank you for the very concise explanation Toastmaster Jacob. So subsequently, I would like to invite our timer for the day, Dynamic Leadership Level 2, Toastmasters Human, to explain his role to us. Hello, fellow Toastmasters and guests. So as your timer for today, it is my job to ensure that the meeting run according to the stipulated schedule and to ensure that our speakers, regardless of what session, the evaluation sessions, the project session, or the table topic session, the speakers must speak according to the stipulated time. So uh, you don't have to worry about Malaysian timing because I'm very well known to my very strict in my timing back at my club. And I will report uh, the timing of every speakers at the end of their meeting. Any under time or over time will make you Eligible for the award at the end of the meeting, I believe. Is it? Are you? Are your club is very strict in the timing? Um, no, we are not. But it's part of the consideration. Okay. So back to you, Thomas. So the evening. Thank you for the very clear explanation, Thomas. You want. So last but not least, we have our general evaluator for today, who is visionary communication level three, Thomas Natalie. Let's invite her to explain her role to us. Good evening, everyone. I'm Natalie from Monash University Toastmasters Club. So it is an honor for me to become the general evaluator of UM Toastmasters Club. 
So as a general evaluator, I will basically evaluate anything and everything that takes place throughout the meeting. And not forgetting that I have a team of evaluators with me. And they are the table topics evaluator, project speech evaluators, and role players who shall provide their respective evaluation and reports at their designated session. And I will also provide my general feedback about the strengths and areas of improvement for this club during my general evaluators report session. That's all from me. Over to you, TME. Right. Thank you, Toastmasters Natalie. So, all right, before we begin, let me give all of you here a brief flow of today's event. So we will start with a table topic session whereby volunteers will be invited to present an impromptu speech, which the, ta the topic will be given by our table topics master. So for this session, everyone, including non-Toastmasters guests, have a chance to give an impromptu speech. So all of you are encouraged to participate in this session to try out your table topic speak, or rather impromptu speaking skills. So after our table topic session, we would have a short break. After the short break, we would have a prepared speech session whereby our Toastmasters members would present a speech that they have prepared beforehand with specific objectives. Following the prepared speech session, we would have an evaluation session whereby our speakers would receive constructive feedback for their speeches so that they will be able to work and improve on it later on. All right, so that's it for the introduction. Now we will proceed with our first session, which is the table topic session. And I would like to pass the floor to our table topics master, who is Toastmaster Kim Deng. Over to you. Thank you, our Toastmaster evening. Yeah, allow me to share my slide. Is my slide visible? Yes. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Toast University of Malaya Toastmaster Club meeting 318. And this is the table topic session, a very exciting and fun session. But before we start the table topic session, can I invite our timer to demonstrate the timing for today's table topic session? So in fact, for table topic session, a topics will be given to the speaker and the speaker will speak for one to two minutes. And at one minute and 30 seconds, the green light will light up. So timer, can you show the green light? Yes. And then at two minutes, the amber light or yellow light. And at two minutes and 30 seconds, actually two minutes, the red light will come up. Yes. And then two minutes and 30 seconds is the a maximum time uh, the speaker will be allocated to attempt a table topic speech where the timer will actually message it, message you in the chat box if you go over time. And that's it for the timing for today's table topic session. And in fact, what's fun for today's table topic session is that today we actually uh, adopt question related to the themes of today's meeting, which is the Malaysian time. And I have prepared a few questions for all of you to attempt. And what's more, I want to share with you today, for today's table topic session, we will not be using volunteer system, you know, to ask for speaker. And in fact, we're going to use a wheel of names to determine who is going to attend the table topic session. So let me share the uh, wheel of name. So the first speaker is going to be Congratulations, Alinsa. So Alinsa, are you ready to attend the table topic speech? Hello. Hi, Alinsa, are you there? Yeah, she's a guest. Yeah. So would you like to try on our table topic session? You can... You are allowed to reject, of course. I think maybe we have a in the wish list, then we take another spin at the wheel. Sure, yeah, we, sure. we will do that. Okay, now mm. we take another spin of the wheel. So who is going to be the uh, first table topic speaker? Oh, Joshua, congratulations, Joshua, you are the... Uh, 
So, Joshua, can you attempt the Thibodeau speech? Yes, yes. Yeah, sure. So let me share with you the question. So for the first table topic speech for today's meeting, meeting 318, the question is none other than, it's not about having time. It's about making time. It's not about having time. It's about making time. Over to you, Toastmaster Joshua. It's not about having time, it's about making time. I am the kind of person who likes to do his assignments during the last minute. And that is always what causes me to do things at full tilt. You know, having to rush and um, sacrifice my sleep. But I realized that and because I'm late, I wish that I have more time. I wish that I have more time. When in fact, I'm just lazy. I like to delay. And I always use my time for my pleasures, such as playing games or doing other things that is not as important as my assignment. So the problem is I did not make time for myself to actually focus on the assignment. Instead, when... It comes to the 11th hour, only then I start to have regrets. Only then I start to realize and wish that I have more time. When in actual fact, I don't have, I don't make time for myself to do the assignment. And at the end of the day, I wouldn't have time to do other things such as relaxing or enjoying with other people. And if the if it was, if it comes to the worst part, sometimes when you're late in doing assignment, you might be how should I say, rude towards other people because you don't have time to even treat them nicely because you're too focused in completing the assignment. So that is all for me. Thank you. Well, thank you, Joshua, for the attempt. Yeah, thank you for that. Now we move on to the second Table topic speaker. Now again, let's head to the wheel of names. So the second table topic speaker is going to be. Who is that? Oh, Sing An. Well, congratulations, Sing An, for being the second table topic speaker. So Sing An, do you want to try? I think Sing An is a guest. Yes, she is. Yeah. So, Singan, do you want to try the table topic question? I can try. She said I can try. Okay, sure. So, now let's head to the question. So, for the second table topic question, it's going to be. Better three hours too soon than one minute too late. Better three hours too soon than one minute too late is actually a quote from Shakespeare. Over to you, Singan. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, for me, I think better three hours too soon than one minute too late. It means that we need to prepare our, uh, our tasks more earlier because um, we need time to prepare in order to perform better in the real thing, in the real competition. Like, for example, like public speaking competition, you can't prepare in just one minute because one minute before the competition, I mean. So it is better three hours or more than that because I think we need time to prepare the script and also prepare uh, by practice, practicing yourself at home in front of a mirror so that when it comes to the real competition, you can perform better, yeah. And I think it applies to everything like exams or even interviews. You can't just prepare last minute because um, it will like affect your working performance or even your interview performance or any other kinds of performance, yeah. So I think better three hours too soon than one minute too late. 
yeah. So that's all from me. Thank you. Well, thank you, Singyan, for the attempt for the table topic speech. What a great speech! Yeah, in fact, it is actually better three hours too soon. We can do everything, you know, be it our assignment or even test preparation. Do not try to procrastinate because at the end of the day, when you realize that you have waste too much time, and then you start to uh, realize that a lot of things haven't done yet, and then you start panicking. So better three hours too soon than one minute too late. So now let's head to the wheel of names again to determine who is going to be the third. Uh, table topic speaker. So for our third table topic speaker, so now let's spin the wheel. Oh, Thomas Lim, congratulations for being the third table topic speaker. So Thomas Lim, are you there? Yeah, always here for you, man. Wow, uh, great. That's great. Glad to hear that. Well, let's head to the question, shall we? Yeah, sure. Definitely. Should I open my camera because I'm using my phone? Yeah, uh, it's, it is encouraged to open your camera. Okay. Well, for the third table topic question, it is going to be... What if you can manipulate time? What if you can manipulate time? Over to you, Thomas Lim. Uh, can think before this, can I ask how many, how many minutes are located for the uh, speech? One to two minutes, and the maximum is two minutes and 30 seconds. Okay. Sure. So, I should start after the instruction or how? Uh, yeah, Thomas, you can start anytime you want. And the timer will begin once you uh, utter the first word. Okay. Good greetings, everyone. So I would be very happy if I can manipulate time because time is very precious for everyone. If I can manipulate time, I can manipulate the world. If I can manipulate time, I would like to make sure that each assignment, each task in my life would be allocated enough time and sufficient time for me to deal with and also to ensure that I'll be having a best time in my life because we all know you only live once, you're alone. Besides, if I can manipulate time, I will make sure that I also give back to the community and to serve the nation and to ensure that the nation can achieve sustainable development goals uh, because 2030 is coming, as we all know. And I hope that as a youth, we can build the nation in marching toward SDG and also share prosperity vision together with our leaders of the country and the leaders of the world. As we know, youth play an important role in the world, just like Malala and all other youth leaders. So if I could manipulate time, I would be a youth leader and also to serve the nation in any capacity to ensure that I can maximize my potential and also to give my potential at full tilt to the community and to create a positive impact on the society. With that, I would like to conclude my speech with Rome was not built in a day and I would like to call upon all the youth to work together with me and to manipulate the time and to manage our time wisely to ensure that we can live our life to the fullest and make the best of our time and our life when we are still in this world. Thank you so much. Well, oh, thank you, Thomas Lim. What an inspiring and great speech. I'm totally thank blown you. away by your speech. You know, by simply manipulating time, I'm we couldn't imagine what is the impact, you know, can youth bring to the world. And I believe that, you know, by, and if we are given the chance, you know, to manipulate time, I believe that we can bring so much positive change to this world, to make this world a better place for everyone and also for our future generation. Thank you, Thomas, for the attempt for the third table topic speech. And now we are going to move on to the wheel of names again to determine who is going to be the fourth table topic speech. And speaker. So, timer, do we still have time for the table topic speech? Unfortunately, based on the schedule, we don't have. Let's get one more. So, can, can we have another more? The fourth? Uh, we can, but I'm not sure whether uh, from the updating, updated schedule, we, we, uh, there's like cross from, there's one less of the project speakers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, we can, yeah. Um, 
uh, have another slot, another one speaker. Okay, sure. So, so I presume this is the final slot, right? Yeah. Okay, sure. So who is going to be the final table topic speaker? So now let's review, let's spin the view and determine who is going to be. And the final table topic speaker is none other than, oh, the to our Toastmaster of evening, Toastmaster Goy. Well, Toastmaster, so Goy, are you ready to attempt the table topic speech? Yep. Whenever you are. Great. So now let's review the question. And the last question, the last table topic question is going to be, how will you waste 10 days of life? How will you waste 10 days of life? Over to you, Goy. 10 days of life. It's essentially 240 hours which means that I can accomplish a lot of things in these 10 days of life. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a final year student, which means that in one more semester, I would have graduated and I would need to work until I am around 50 or 60 years old, which means that I would have less and less leisure time as I grow older. So if I have a chance to waste 10 days of my life, I would not waste it. Instead, I would utilize it to my fullest in order to accompany my loved ones. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that all of you here would agree that accompanying our loved ones are a very, is a very important thing because our family members can <clears throat> only live together harmoniously if we spend time with them and <clears throat> treasure our moments together. I would spend my time to travel to different places and take vacations with them so that we would be able to <clears throat> like create a lot of memories. And <clears throat> when we grow older, we will be able to cherish those memories and <clears throat> be happy when thinking about it. And also I would spend those time to learn more things. As an AI student, there is just so much things to learn. There are tons of models out there since AI is booming nowadays. So I would spend more time in order to ex <clears throat> experiment and learn more of these techniques so that I would become a better professional in the future. And also last but not least, as a Toastmaster, I would spend more time to craft my speech so that I would be able to <clears throat> participate and give better speeches in the future and also try my best to influence people and become a more useful person to the society. And that's all from me, back to you, Toastmaster, Table Topics Master. So thank you, our Toastmaster evening. Toastmaster Goy, what an inspiring speech that you have delivered. Although you were given 10 days of life for you to waste, but instead you're not wasting it, you're utilizing it to the fullest, to the fullest potential to make sure that there's going to be meaning for your life. And it's going to create value for yourself, like accompany your loved one, you know, spend time for yourself doing things that can bring positively impact to yourself and even to the world. I'm deeply inspired by your speech. And now that's it for today's table topic session. And now we are going to vote. So now let's spend one minute. I think the uh, voting poll is launched by our Zoom master. You can choose who is going to be the uh, table, the best table topic speaker they you think. Yeah, just... Just vote for either one of the one of them. And we can proceed with photo sessions and break. I'm just gonna leave the vote. Alone. <laughs> sure, I think yeah, again, that's it for today's table topic session. Now move I will now pass the floor back to our Toastmaster of evening, Toastmaster going over to you. All right, thank you for the wonderful session. So now we will have a short photo session before our actual break. So I will pass the floor to Toastmaster Ming Khan to conduct this photo session. Okay, so everyone, um, switch on your lovely camera and put on your lovely smile on that camera. We're going to have a very good photo, right? Yeah, come on, switch on your cam. And like, uh, give another like uh, five to six seconds to get ready. Yeah, put your hair gel or I don't know. <laughs> you have to look handsome. Okay, so guys, ready? In three, 
two, wait, no, yet I'm gonna find my shortcut. In three, two, one, smell. Okay, and it's our tradition to put on a funny face after this. Um, so funny face. In three, two, one. Oh, could we literally put an emoji? <laughs> okay. okay, that's all for the photo sessions. And I will pass the floor back to TME. Right, thank you, Toastmasters Minka. So now we will have a short break. So, timer, may I know how much time do we have for the break? So, since we kind of like over time from the schedule, so we can afford to have like five minutes break. So, until 7.43. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we would resume our meeting in five minutes, which is at 7.43. So, you may have a short <clears throat> break. Again, I'm the ASA of the meeting. I'm now resuming the meeting and I'm going to pass the floor. Again, before passing the floor, I want to remind all of you to um, uh, perhaps keep your camera on to give support to the speakers which are going to speak just um, later. And also keep yourself muted if you are not um, speaking, so you can have a smooth flow of a meeting. All right, I'm going to pass the floor now to Toastmaster of the Evening, Toastmaster Goy. Over to you. All right, thank you, Toastmaster Ming Kang. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So now it's our second session, which is the prepared speech session. So we will proceed at full heel from now on. All right. So for our first speech, we have a speech from one of our UN Toastmasters Club member, who is Effective Coaching Laboratory Toastmasters Kaman. So before that, I would like to invite his evaluator, Effective Coaching Level 1 Toastmasters Kenneth, to read out his speech purpose. Okay, so Kamun, the purpose of this project is for the member to introduce himself or herself to the club and to learn about the basic structure of a public speech. All right, thank you, Toastmasters Kenneth. So now may I invite our general evaluator to read out the notes to the evaluator. Uh, sure, so for the evaluator, this member is completing um, his or her first speech in Toastmasters. And the goal of the evaluation is to give the member an effective evaluation of his or her speech and delivery style because the icebreaker is the first project a member completes. So you may choose to use only the notes section and not the numerical score. Back to you, Tiami. Thank you, General Evaluator. So Toastmasters Kaman has been a UM Toastmasters Club member for some time. And since I joined, he has always been a member here. So today he will present us with a very interesting speech with a very interesting title. So Toastmasters Kaman, Mr. Chicken. Mr. Chicken. Wait, how about the timing? Kaman. I'm sorry. The timing? Oh, sorry. You didn't explain it to him. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sorry. All right. So may I invite our timer to explain the timing for the prepared speech session? Okay, for your icebreaker speech. Uh, the time stipulated is four to six minutes. So at the fourth minute, the green light will be the green background will be shown. At the sixth, uh, fifth minute, the yellow light will be shown. And at the sixth minute, the red light, the red background will be shown. And then you'll begin with another 30 seconds to wrap up your speech. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Tango. All right. So sorry for the blunder. Once again, Toastmasters come on, Mr. Chicken. Mr. Chicken, Toastmasters come on. The floor is yours. Good eye contact and body language. Well organized speech with opening body and conclusion. Use of humor. Wow. And well concluded with speech value. I can't believe it that this was my icebreaker's evaluation six years ago. And I went to deliver my icebreaker speech, ironically, as my last speech in UN. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters and guests, 
So there is a special speech, not just because it's an icebreaker, but because it is a speech that I wanted to share to show appreciation. So for today's icebreaker, I'm going to make it a little different. Rather than share about myself, I would like to share about my Toastmasters journey throughout with you. For the Toastmasters and guests, just to introduce myself a little, my name is Yang. You know, in typical Chinese, right, in every surname, we always put an A in front. So if your surname is, for example, Lim Ming Kang, people might call you, hey, Alim. Or maybe you have like, Kao Kian Ting. So people will call you, hey, Ako. So my name is Yang Ka Man. So what do people call me? Ah, Yang. So that's where the chicken comes from. And all started with this. My Toastmasters journey started with this. This is the traditional education manual called the Competent Communication. And the first project is called the Icebreaker. And during that time, I remember that the evaluation form was written by distinguished Toastmaster, Dr. Davy, And I deliver my speech in Complex Padana Siswa. Now, during that time, when I started my Toastmaster's journey, I always feel awkward. Why? Not because of during speeches, but frankly speaking, even until today, I dare not stand on this stage. You want me to share a personal story? There's a part of me in my heart is like, I don't want. Just sit down, maybe be an evaluator, be a role player, and don't just deliver speeches. And because of this, right, I myself, my heart tells me, hey, come on, don't deliver speech, lah. just evaluator, or take a role. That's it, that's how you support. You don't need to deliver speeches. And because of that, what my heart says, I literally chicken out throughout the day. During 2014, when I started my Toastmasters journey until 2016, I'm basically a senior member only, a member where I just take up roles, maybe once in a while deliver speeches, and just have fun with my peers until one day in 2017. Fast forward three years later in 2017, my friend called me, Postmaster Sam Wynn. We meet in Complex Padana Siswa during the time, and we started chit-chatting about our past experiences, how does it feel, and just for information, Sam was the past secretary and also the past VPM, if I'm not wrong, for the club. And we chit-chatted once in a while, and Sam asked me a question, Hey, Kamana or Ayama? Can you be president or not? The heart in me again, chicken out, says that, are you the one la? It's, why want to be president? You just member only ma. Why suddenly jump to president? You think people respect you man? You think people will trust you man? My heart always said no. And I literally stand back and chicken out. Throw the post. But Toastmaster Sam shared with me one thing. He says that you, if you be the president, you have our support. Just to share with you why that Toastmaster Sam was the president, right? During that time, UN Toastmasters Club was struggling in terms of membership. So during that time, we might, we always have less than 12 members in a meeting. And in each meeting, there's always members who are taking double or triple roles. So Sam was the VPM and secretary. Kame was the treasurer and he, she took up, if I'm not wrong, secretary as well and even VPM, and that stressed them out throughout the day. And there's a point in time where they felt really tired and really bummed out. So that's why Sam requested me to take up. So Sam told me, come on, if you're president, you have our support. We will guide you, we will help you, and we will provide you with all the things that you need. So the election came, and I heard our general evaluator mention that she jumped from treasurer to immediately become president. Just to share with you, I was a member and immediately elected as president. Doing the role as president has been tough because members are pushing me and also develop me to become a better member. But I learned a lot. With my team, Sam as the secretary, Kame is the treasurer, Jeff as the VPPR during that time, we lead the club with all our experiences and we actually pushed the club to President Distinguish. And from that moment on, onwards, I gained a little confidence. 
and my Toastmasters journey strive forward at full tilt. Why? Because my heart never chickened out again. Because I know that there are people who supported me throughout the day. So after my president role, I took up the role as area director. I bring members out for gatherings when we visit other clubs. I even seen Yvonne delivering her level one speech that time in Bajaya Toastmasters Club. And now she's the district champion. Currently, my role is the TRI co-chair. Basically, what I do is I conduct education sessions for members with the new team, meeting new faces and new ideas. But in my Toastmasters journey, my learning never stops there. Even though my Toastmasters journey ended in UM, but my heart, my soul, and my memory are always with the club because of the people that supported me and because of the learnings I get throughout the day. To my peers and toasters, Toastmasters is really a platform to develop your not only communication, but leadership. Because you get to explore so many people, meet many ideas, explore many ideas and meet many people for us to gain experiences that can help you in your career. So I wish that we together strive back and we can grow together as Toastmasters members. With that, back to you, to TME. Thank you, Toastmasters Kaman, for the very touching and inspiring speech. As a UM Toastmasters staff member for three or four year, three years, I didn't heard this story before, so it's kind of really touching to me. So I think we should have more of this kind of sharing sessions in the future to know more about the history of UM Toastmasters Club. All right. So next, we would have a speech from Persuasive Influence Level 4 Toastmasters Club. So may I invite his evaluator, Toast Engaging Humor Level 5 Toastmasters, Yvonne, to read out his speech purpose. Thank you, Mr. TME. The purpose of this project is for the member to apply his or her leadership and planning knowledge to develop a project plan, organize a guidance committee, and implement the plan with the help of a team. The purpose of the second speech is for the member to share some aspect of his or her experience completing the project. Thank you. Back to you, TME. Thank you, Toastmasters Yvonne. So now may I invite our general evaluator to read out the notes to our event. All right. Thank you, TME. Toastmaster Yvonne, the member completing this project has committed a great deal of time to developing a plan forming a team, meeting with a guidance committee, and completing his ambition project. That's all from me. Back to you, TME. Thank you, General Evaluator. So may I invite our timer to demonstrate the timing for this speech? Okay, so Toastmaster Kyle, based on this agenda, your stipulated time for your speech is five to seven minutes. At the fifth minute, the green background will be shown. At the sixth minute, the yellow background will be shown and at the seventh minute the red background will be shown and you have another 30 seconds to wrap up your speech back to you all right thank you timer so Kao has never been to a vegetable farm before and he has just found out recently that broccoli is actually not a plant but actually a part of a cabbage so i'm very interested to know more about what Kao has discovered recently so Toastmasters Cow, a staff training module, next saga. A staff training module, next saga, Toastmasters Cow. The floor is yours. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. Uh, I will be sharing screen right now. So give me a second. All right. Everyone see my screen? All good? Nice. I can see Ming Kang giving me, a, as well as uh, Arthur and all of you giving me a thumbs up. Ladies and gentlemen, Boys and girls and friends. Sorry, got a call. Do you think that a high performance leader deserves to be called a leader? And what does it take to become that high performance leader? Well, today in my project, I'm going to show to all you beautiful ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, how a project should be done. Just for a quick info, the Toastmasters High Performance Leadership uh, Program is all about planning your own project. 
And I took the road last taken. I actually went full tilt and way in all my effort to make this a challenging one. Earlier, I've explained to you what I've started. Well, to reiterate and to remind some of you here, I started a talent enrichment program in this part-time job place that I have been uh, working in. And the company and the group is called eBright. Basically, what they do is that they give coaching lessons to kids. And this is what they want uh, to improve on, is to make sure that the kids learn. To quickly summarize, okay, let me just click onto it. All right. It is an education center that provides speech coaching for kids 7 to 12 years old and teens 13 to 17. Recently, there is a boom in terms of online classes, and that's why some of the coaches here have been new. And I thought, hey, why not? Why not start a training program from the senior coaches to the junior coaches? And I went about doing that with that one vision of making sure that the training program focuses on freedom, freedom to choose and learn and to actively learn. And that's why it's called Andragogy and Active Learning. There are several goals that I set out. Basically, it is to make sure that it is entertaining and useful for the coaches, and it is to be completed as an entire module. And the coaches love it. That's why I set a goal of having 50% participants and feeling that they learn something and 70% uh, thinking that they have completed an entire module. So what happened? Well, I'm happy to report that module is successful. 50% of the participants participants felt that their learning outcome has been achieved. So to reiterate, these are some of the features as well as methods that I use. So this shows that people like it. Overall, this is the best result. From a survey done from all the staff, 91.67% lean towards yes. Yes for what? Satisfaction that they have learned something and they liked it. Now, that's goal number one. How about goal number two? Well, I would like to say that I have fallen short just a tiny little bit. Why? I set out to put a goal, right? If there are maximum amounts of participants, let's just say if there are six participants out of 12, there will be half, right? I'm aiming for a full participation by these staff. So on the first module, this is the participation rate. Then on the second, it's, it looks a little better, right? And then on the third, it is sort of tapering towards the middle. Overall, these are the number of participants, 18 out of 28 that have participated in the full program. And I got 64.29%. For 70%, I did not achieve that. So this project showed something to me that, well, there are achievable goals and there are also those that you can strive for. And I learned that no matter what you do, it is always the journey that matters. Whoever felt that way, I hope that you will, could give a like or a thumbs up. For those who are not sure, here I am to share with you. Now. Why the high performance leadership? It's because of this thing, the 360 leadership evaluation. Now, if you are a Toastmaster, this is the best part because in this project, you get direct feedback from your team itself. So I have charted an organizational chart that looks like this. And these are the team members within the project. You might not know them in terms of face, when I just put the words there, but right now, when their face are there, it feels a lot more real. Don't you think so? So I've asked all these people, what do you think about my leadership? And the people with a thick answered back. And this is what I found out from their response. It turns out out of two, four, six, eight, eight categories that 
this project requires, I found some strengths and also weaknesses when it comes to my leadership style. The green color indicates those that I'm good at. I'm good at communication, interpersonal skills, reliability. What I am okay okay are the blue bars, which is leadership, problem solving, and prior prioritization. What I'm not good at is the red bars. Honestly, I found out that I have weak motivation when it comes to getting my team all hyped up. And I find that teamwork and team building is one of the weakest points I have. These are the breakdowns. Now I'll focus on what I'm not good at. First, teamwork. And it turns out it comes from two main categories. I am not so good at supporting the organization at all levels. In fact, one of the things that I learned through verbal uh, response from one of, the, my, one of my team members, and she said, Kyle, you know what? You're really good at planning. However, you're not good at failing. I'm like, what? Hear me out, she said. Because you're so good at planning to not fail, there is no opportunity for you to learn and adapt and become better. Wow. When I hear her say that, she followed. If there is an opportunity to learn, then we would have a chance to give you input and feel that we own the project together with you. It is thanks to this project in Toastmasters that I learned how important it is to also appreciate not just the members, but also to allow those members in the learning process, in the ideation process. And one thing that I admit I'm not good at is to let go and to allow my team members to also formulate, formulate the plan together with me. And that's why with this honesty, I learned something about myself. And moving forward, I would want to allow my team members in the future for future projects to be part of anything that I do. Other than that, I would need to listen carefully to them, as well as to allow some room for opportunities to challenge myself or to fail. This way, I can rise to any challenge. With that, I would like to thank these feedbacks. And I can see the benefit of the High Performance Leadership Program by Toastmasters. These are some of the members who gave feedback and I learned together. For any one of you, Toastmasters or not, if you do consider taking up this project, I highly, highly recommend you to don't take the easy path. Go for a full tilt and try to apply it in your work, in your studies, and really see the improvement not just in yourself, but also the people around you. With that, I would like to inform that the project was such a success that we are moving to the next stage, to the next saga. And the company itself started with this project and now has graduated with a full department with their team members. That is what I wanted to share about the power of this High Performance Leadership Project. Now, I won't be able to do this successfully if it's not for the guidance of Toastmasters as well as non-Toastmasters here. So thank you so much. And these are some of the hidden figures, people who are working behind me to make sure that this project is a success. Thank you so much. And I hope that all of you who listen would consider taking up the HPL program. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you for the wonderful sharing by Kao. All right, <clears throat> so now I'll share my screen again.
All right. So now it's time for our last speaker to present her speech, who is Presentation Mastery Level 4 Toastmaster Samia. So may I invite her evaluator, Innovative Planning Level 3 Toastmaster Quimin to read out her speech purpose. Thank you, Toastmaster. Good evening, Goy. Now for Samia's speech is on the last project of any path, which is the reflection on your path. The speech title for this evening is My Journey and the purpose statement is as follow. The purpose of this project is for her to reflect on her growth during the completion of this path. The purpose of this speech is for her to share some aspect of her growth during the completion of this path. That will be all for me. Thank you and back to you Toastmaster of evening. Thank you Toastmaster Screaming. So may I invite our general evaluator to read out the notes to the evaluator? Right, thank you TME. For Toastmaster Queen, this member is completing the last speech in her current path and the member may speak on any aspect of the journey completed. The speech may be persuasive, humorous, informational or crafted in any style that appeals to the member and supports the speech content. Good luck, back to you TME. Right, thank you General Evaluator. So may I invite the timer to demonstrate the timing for this speech? Okay, Toastmaster Samia, the time stipulated for, <laughs> for the speech is 10 to 12 minutes. At the 10th minute, the green background will be shown. At the 11th minute, the yellow background will be shown. And at the 12th minute, the red background will be shown before you have, and then you have another 30 seconds to wrap up your speech. Back to you. Right, thank you, Timer. So Toastmaster Samia has just graduated from her Bachelor in Business and Administration, and she would like to share her journey with us today. And for your information, Toastmaster Samia would be presenting in a slightly unique manner tonight, as she would be presenting in a pre-recorded video, right? So now I will pass the floor to Toastmaster Samia. My, Toastmaster Samia, my journey. My journey, Toastmaster Samia. Floor is yours. Calling from Zoom Master, do you guys see the share screen? Yep. All right, let's do it in three, two, Good evening to my fellow Toastmasters, Honorable General Evaluator and guests. This is Samia, and this is my journey. I remember when I first started my journey in 2019 as a guest, I watched Toastmaster Zev's final presentation on reflecting on his pathway. And boy, at that moment of time, I imagined myself in that position. I told myself, Wow, I have to go there. I have to do my final presentation just like him. So professional and fulfilling. And this year has been a really great year for me for a couple of reasons. Even though it's literally pandemic 2.0. But finally, I have graduated from the event. And now I'm doing my last and final speech for Presentation Mastery Pathway as well. Since I joined Toastmasters, I've been privileged to serve both as treasurer and VPPR for two consecutive years and be among the most positive, supportive and friendly group of Toastmasters around me. Now, uh, different people have different reasons to join Toastmasters. And for me, the key purpose to join Toastmaster was to challenge myself and to improve my anxiety level. I had this uh, anxiety, public speaking fear. I couldn't speak in front of people. Uh, it's also known as glossophobia. I know it's a cool name, <laughs> glossophobia, but I really don't want that. I, I gave my icebreaker speech on 15th March, 2020. And my evaluator, for, uh, first evaluator was Toastmaster Sibao. And then the president that time was Kui Min. But there is actually a funny story. Toastmaster Siba asked me, what was my speech title for the icebreaker? So I replied, uh, I haven't thought about it. Then he replied back, 
Okay, so your speech title is I haven't thought about it. <laughs> well, it's really funny. And I said, no, I actually haven't decided yet. So my first speech title was Finding the Stars. Now, if I have to measure my progress with that title, I will say I'm still on the spaceship, I'm not on a star. And since then, I have completed around 15 speeches, mostly at UMTMC and around 35% of the speeches outside, um, mostly at APU Toastmasters. And I'm really grateful for that to them. And it's really difficult to uh, summarize, to tell every details of my journey in just 10 minutes. But I'm going to divide it into two, the positive sides, the negative sides. So let's start with the negative one, right? <laughs> okay, so like every path, there are ups and downs. And for me, even though I have completed five levels, I still believe that there are improvement areas for me, such as non-verbal communications, body languages, you know, I think I still have to have deeper understanding, more practice on the non-verbal communications. Other than that, I still have to regulate, to control my anxiety level. Even though I have given many speeches, I still feel that some days and sometimes I feel anxious and I have these panic attacks. So I have to work on that. And the final one is speech variations, which is actually a difficult term for me. Speech variations, I feel it very difficult and I still have to work on it. Okay, let's look at the bright side now. I have learned so many things from Toastmasters, many techniques, styles, uh, many things. It's really difficult to list down everyone, every, every single uh, thing. But if I have to say, I will say three major things that I've learned. The first one is obviously communication skill. I couldn't even look at the audience before. I remember I did my first table topics at UMTMC. I stand like this, so nervous. My eyes were here. I was talking like this, this, anywhere, but here. I didn't look at my audience. I was nervous. I stopped uh, in the middle of the speech. So I learned about communication skills to how to improve on that. And mostly I learned it uh, during my project on understanding your communication style. And I found out that I really do not have just one style. I follow assertive style and analytical styles, uh, majorly these two. Well, other than communication skills, I have also learned about the power of pause. Really, it's okay to pause. It's okay to take a deep breath if we cannot proceed on with our topics. And I, I had really no idea uh, before that we can really do that in the middle of a public speaking. It, it was like I thought that, okay, maybe I have to be so abrupt. But no, it's okay to pause. And the amazing Toastmasters, they actually helped me to understand and to improve on that. So now I know how important is the power of pause. Now the next one is knowing your audience. Oh boy, knowing your audience because audience is the key element of public speaking. We are basically talking to you. Yeah, really you. <laughs> I'm talking to you, yes audience are the most important key element we have to communicate with them to interact with them starting from adapting a suitable topic that actually relates to them so those things i couldn't learn without toastmasters now if other than this 
takeaways, I will say I enjoyed most level 4. Uh, I think it's because I have learned so many, I gathered many informations, uh, I explored uh, and visited other external clubs, so it was a really great time for me. Level 4 was my favorite level. <laughs> I don't know if we can actually pick one. And besides that, mostly when I uh, gave my presentations, I think I chose um, mental health related topics and I really liked those so many of my speeches were related um, of mental illness besides that I spoke about sustainability business um, I really like to talk about informative topics so yeah those were really great times and speeches for me and in a nutshell if I have to end, actually my journey in Toastmaster is amazing. Before I joined Toastmaster, I thought, well, when I'll finish all the levels and I'll complete a pathway, maybe I'll be so professional. So I picture someone from TED Talk, you know, so handsome, confident and almost have no mistakes. So I thought, yeah, I will become that. But really, now that I'm doing my final speech in front of you, I can say it honestly and confidently that completing a pathway is really not the end. Toastmaster is actually a peakless mountain. There is no final destination. So it's a continuous journey. The word I can say is Kaizen, which is also known as continuous improvement. So those are the things that I've learned that yes, I still have a long way to go. Now completing the pathway, obviously it has given me the privilege to explore many resources. Uh, I have been trained by evaluators, mentors, and from the resources. But the whole journey is ahead of me. Now I have to go the long way have to start over again and again, right? So, the finals, uh, I will say that I will end my sentence and I will end my speech by saying, by rephrasing back my first title, which is Finding the Stars. Now I'm gonna say, I have the whole universe ahead of me and I still have to go a long way. Thank you everyone, thank you Toastmasters and I'm really grateful uh, for being among the amazing group of people. Thank you, back to you. Alright, thank you Toastmaster Samia for her very inspiring speech. It inspired me to give more speeches from now on since it's been a while since I last gave a speech. And I look forward to hearing more from Toastmaster Samia. So that marks the end of our prepared speech session. But before that, we, I would like to invite all of you here to give a round of applause to Toastmaster Kaman for completing his icebreaker speech. So may every one of you here unmute your mic and give a round of applause to Toastmaster Kaman. Yay! Not tough. Nine tough to go. Okay. <laughs> So thank you, everyone. So now we will be moving forward to our evaluation session. So I will now pass the floor to our I'm sorry. Would you like to do it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So now, since our prepared speech session has been completed, we will need to vote for the best prepared speech speaker. All right. So do work for your favorite speaker. All right, so now we'll proceed with our evaluation session. I'll now pass the floor to our general evaluator, Toastmaster Natalie. Thank you, Toastmaster Goy. 
Well, now is the last session of the meeting of every Toastmaster meeting, which is the evaluation session. So basically the evaluation session is for our, our role players, our evaluators and our wonderful technical role players for them to present their report and provide constructive and beneficial feedback for the speakers so that we can learn from our mistakes and become a better speaker in the future. All right, without further ado, let me invite our first evaluator, which is our table topics evaluator. May I invite Effective Coaching Level 5, Sean, to the stage? Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. It's been a great pleasure being your table topic evaluator. And we have four speakers for today. Um, and our first speaker, Joshua Lim. It's not about having time, it's about making time. And he started his speech with a very clear point, saying that he confessed that he has a problem with time management. He is being a very typical Malaysian, doing things last minute assignments at 11 hour. So it was a very relatable story. And I'm very happy that Joshua started off with a topic that is very easily, easily relatable. Uh, room for improvement, probably Joshua, I've seen you joining this club for quite some time and I know you're the informative and very technical speaker, but maybe a challenge to you probably for your next speech, whether it's table topic or whether it's prepared speech, do open up to your personal story and practice some vocal variety. So that is my challenge to you and Joshua, it's small little steps, common talk many years before he opened up to share his personal story. And I hope you, your next speech would be more open with your personal stories, as well as having more vocal variety in your speeches. Second table topic speaker, Sing En. Better three hours too soon than one minute too late. And Sing En demonstrated clear speech structure. She had a very clear opening. She said, um, she defined the topic first, what she meant by the topic. And she used a very clear example of being prepared early for speech competition. And she ended with a moral of the story, which is very clear to everybody that don't be late, don't be a typical Malaysian. And if you're going out for a speech, go into full tilt and prepare ahead of time rather than being too late. I don't have much recommendation for Sing En because she demonstrated a good uh, vocal variety, a clear sentence structure. Probably in your next speech, you could explore different dimensions of virtual screens. So you could play around with the screen and um, have more uh, purposeful hand gestures during your speech later on. Next, our third speaker, Thomas Lin. What if you could manipulate time? I was expecting more crazier ideas where you have this superhero power story and you could probably change history and things like that. But you went on with a topic about giving back to community, having a positive impact. And what Thomas demonstrated was a speaker that is very passionate about his topic. He was very passionate about giving back to the community. And I think that was right the end because that's what he is passionate about. Um, my personal suggestion to you, and I'm more of a person that would love uh, crazy ideas when it comes to table topic was that you explore the far ends of uh, manipulating time. Um, you were a bit more confined to what you think time means to other people. When you can manipulate time, you can help others. But maybe try a crazy idea next time. I think in table topic, you can choose to speak within the topic outside of the topic or beyond the topic. So maybe in your next table topic, go crazy and have fun with table topics. Finally, we have our fourth speaker, which is the TME, Goy. How will you waste 10 days of your life? Now, this is a speaker that chose to speak out of the topic. He disagreed with the topic. He disagreed saying, I'm not going to waste time. I'm going to make the best out of my 10 days life. And he started off saying having more time for family, having more time to prepare assignments, prepare speeches, travel to different places. So he gave a very elaborate example of how he would have used the time in extra. Um, Goy, I think you're the TME. I'm not going to comment further that you're also very experienced in um, giving speeches. 
maybe in your next table topic, you could explore about uh, different techniques of developing stories because um, you were jumping from one um, idea to another idea to another idea. What would have been great is that you start with an end in mind. You start with a story saying like, I wish I would have spent more time with family. And you end the story saying that, I wish I had more story, time with my family as well. So there's a whole continuity to your whole table topic. But again, it's just my personal suggestions. I hope that maybe that would bring you to the next level uh, and looking forward to everybody's next table topic speech after this. So with that, back to Madam GE. Thank you, Sean. Can we all give a round of applause to Sean? Because I think that it is difficult to evaluate four speakers at a time. Can we give him a round of applause? All right. Although this is my first time attending a UM Toastmasters Club meeting, but I can see that, Sean, you're a very experienced evaluator. I can see that you dissect everyone's personality. Like for the first speaker, you see that I know that you are a very informative and technical speaker. I can see that you really know the speaker very well. And I really like your evaluation, whereby your feedbacks are very constructive and your recommendations are very specific. And I highly um, encourage everyone here to learn from Sean because he used a word like, I personally think that my personal feeling, he used the word I instead of we, because this shows that this is his personal own feelings and perceptions. And I think that this is a really great job. And without further ado, let me invite our project speech speaker evaluator, Effective Coaching Level 1, Kenneth, to evaluate Effective Coaching Level 3, Carmen. The stage is yours. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so my name is Kenneth. Okay, it is my pleasure to evaluate Carmen's speech today about the chicken. I'm so surprised by the, the unexpected opening by Carmen. It is because in my perception, an opening of the speech is somehow like this. My name is Kenneth. Today, I'm one years old. I'm from University of Malaya, Tadika. Okay, so... You amaze me by portraying a prop, and that's a book, and you said the introduction of um, opening and the body, and you dissect the structure of the speech. And yeah, you bring us into the speech by explaining how you are exposed to the structure of the, of the speech when you first joined Toastmasters. Carmen, one of the biggest advantage of your speech is your speech contains a chronological story. But explain to us how you know Toastmasters, how you're exposed to the structure of a basic, the basic structure of a speech, and how you meet a senior who guided you and motivated you until you became the president. And after you became the president, what are the key takeaways and what are the moral values you have learned? through your Toastmasters journey. So it is step by step and order by order. Carmen, I can see you are a confident speaker. How? It is because you're tired. It is absolutely presentable. If I saw a speaker and he or she is wearing a formal wear, oh yeah, he, he or she portrays an immense sense of confidence. So. This means you respect yourself, you respect the audience and the speech you deliver. Come on, your speech looks great, but I'm here to help you to make your speech even better. When you're contemplating, avoid staring elsewhere. Stare at the camera, although you're thinking. At one part, when you're saying, you stand back, and chicken up. Okay, during your chicken up, maybe you can move up from, you can um, stand back a bit and move up from the camera so that it can show a feeling of healers. Okay, so for your hand gestures, it is a great action for you that you show left and right by swinging your left and right hands. You're pointing out people by using your fingers, like Kamen, Ming Kang, Kian Teng, one, two, three, like this. So it, it really clear on what you're trying to say about. I can help you to improve your hand gestures. How? Oh. 
sometimes I realize your hands will swing after you have completed a sentence. So uh, avoid swinging your hands by putting your hands stoned at a fixed position to portray confidence. All in all, good job, Carmen. Waiting for your next speech. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kenneth, for the wonderful evaluation. I also think that Kenneth um, did a really great evaluation. He provides some words of encouragement that really um, can empower the speaker. And then he also provided some specific recommendations that can really benefit the speaker. May I just suggest you that when you talk about the staring at the camera, it's great that you mentioned this point as it is very applicable. Perhaps you could tell us why is it important to stare in the camera? Is it to increase the audience engagement? Something like that. Yeah, this is just my humble opinion, but overall you did a really great job. Right, now let's invite our second project speech evaluator. Shall we invite Engaging Humor Level 5, Yvonne, who will be evaluating Innovative Planning Level 4, Carl. Thank you, Madam GE. Kyle, first of all, I would like to congratulate you. Why? Because you definitely have achieved the speech objectives. You shared all the elements that are stated in the project speech purpose statement, which I am very amazed because everything is included in such a short speech, five to seven minutes. You have very structured content, very clear data and results, and very organized slides, which allow us to follow your content very easily. And of course, not that you went all at full tilt in your effort in your HBL. When you were presenting your HBL, your energy level also was at full tilt. It was so amazing. And I like how you were in front of the camera. You have very clear voice, very nice vocal variety. Sometimes you go slow, sometimes you go fast, sometimes high pitch, low pitch. It's very Attractive. I was paying attention to you, listening to you. And of course, your sharing of your learning, impeccable, because it is all your personal experience. And you not only shared about the importance of 360 feedback in the HBL and how it impacted you to move forward in this career. You also end your speech with encouragement to all the audience here to make sure they take HBL projects because it is something that I faced. This is the challenge when I was at VPE. I don't want to take this path, go HBL. But you shared all the positive learning to encourage the members to take. It's okay. It's fun. It's very beneficial. I like that very much. And you not forgetting to appreciate your guidance committee by showing gratitude to them, showing their faces on the slides. Now, I would say it's your personal learning and your experience. So I wouldn't want to comment much about what you learn and how, you, how it impacts you. But from a corporate trainer myself, my perspective, I can give you suggestions in the delivery part and I hope it will help you. No accident talking about training, trainer telling you what to do, right? Okay, first of all, your slides. Yes, very nicely done, but a little too wordy, I would say. You may want to summarize it and make your fonts. You don't have to show everything can flash very quickly. And then you pick the important points and put big fonts and highlight those points. Then you talk. Or to make sure we can focus on you at the same time on the slides, only to see left and right, you may want to consider to use it as your virtual background as well because Zoom has this uh, feature now. And also, I would say engaging with audience. Remember I asked you before tonight, uh, the, the meeting tonight, what do you want to, me to focus on? In your engagement, I noticed you got asked us to use emoticons and all that. Perhaps you want to add more engagement by asking them to guess what do you think? Did I achieve it? Did I fail? What is the percentage? You know, get more engagement like that so your audience can be very paying attention to you and listen actively to you during your presentation. Now, all in all, love your content, love your enthusiasm. Just a little bit more in the touch-up, fine-tune on the delivery side. Make your whole presentation more engaging. Then it will be a very powerful co competencies that you have to be a trainer or to continue to be in the training industry. All the best to you. Hope to see you on next speech next time. Thank you very much, Kyle. Bye. Thank you, Yvonne, for the wonderful evaluation. To be honest, as a university student, I really learned a lot from two of the trainers that, was, that were spotlighted just now with Yvonne and Carl. 
I really learned a lot from them and especially from Yvonne's evaluation. Your, your recommendations are so specific and I really like that you stated that you're a trainer and that you are able to help Kai to go through the future speeches. Great job to you and I really learned a lot from you. And last but not least, let us welcome our last project speech evaluator. We'll be innovating planning level three, Kui and he will evaluate presentation mastery level four, Samia. The stage is yours. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator, Natalie. Now, first of all, I would like to congratulate Toastmaster Samia on presenting her last speech of this presentation mastery path. I think it was a very job, very good job, well done on her end. Now, there are a few things that I liked about this uh, speech or her presentation earlier. And it's based on this one thing called, I would like to call it content. Now, for me, content is king. Content is like the main ingredient of cooking. In terms of cooking is the main ingredient for speech, it is your main ingredient. All your technical delivery styles, all of that are supplementary and they add on to perhaps more flavor to your presentation. But content is always king. And why do I say I observe a very good content building from her end? Is that first thing, if you have realized, I find that she incorporated uh, many multiple humorous elements in between of her speeches. It's not all the time, but it's some here and some over there. And this is a very good way to keep uh, the audience attention with her. So this is a great way to grab audience attention and also retain the attention from time to time. A great tool and very well used by her. And the next thing is that she presented her content in a chronological order, meaning it started from the oldest part of time to the most recent part of time. Now, for me, I have been there since she joined the, the club as a guest and then she joined a member and until now, she's even way ahead of me in terms of her uh, pathways achievements. So I believe that in such arrangement, it becomes very easy to follow because we can understand, oh, she did her speech on this, her icebreaker on March of 2020 and then right now she's here. And the next thing about this is that she was very strategic in arranging her content. Now, I was a little bit worried when she go into full details of revealing what her icebreaker speech was, the title and everything. Because I was a bit worried because it would, I'm afraid that it will become like a report of each of her every project. And at the end of the speech, I find that she did a very smart move of connecting of her icebreaker speech to this last speech, which is connecting to the stars, right? And she connected in the way that she's not there yet, but there's many more for her to explore. And I believe that is a very strategic move. What I would love to see more is one technical uh, arrangement, especially when it's recording or in this uh, what we call this virtual meeting, is always to leave some head space above your head, not too much, but not too little, to the extent that it, your head got cut off by the video or out of frame, what we would call it. Always take a step back, a few steps back, or move your device away from you. This way we could, it's a better view of you. And also when you take a step back, we can see your hand gestures better. And the next, thing that I would actually love to is to hear more because there are some parts of the speech that wasn't much elaborate, elaborated. For example, there was one part of she mentioning uh, speech variation and I was curious, what does she mean by speech variation? So perhaps uh, as a speaker, you might want to elaborate what do you mean by speech variations? And finally, what I would love to challenge you is possibly present it live instead next time in person. And uh, 
I hope to hear more from you in your next PATH speech presentation. Thank you and back to you, January Valita. Thank you, Kuimin. Well, Kuimin evaluation is also very in-depth and very wonderful, but may I just suggest you to please keep in mind on the time because I think that you have over time. And then I've discovered that um, when you are reach, when you reached three minutes and 15 seconds, that before three minutes, 15 seconds, you talk about the positive sides of the speaker. And then you only speak about the areas for improvement after three minutes and 15 seconds. So may I suggest you to speak about the areas for improvements when it is either in green or amber light so that you can manage your time well. Yeah, this is just my humble opinion. All right. All of the evaluators have given an evaluation. I would like to say that all of the evaluators were at full tilt. Yes, so can we engage all of the evaluators around of us? And now we shall vote for the best evaluator. You may proceed with the role players report. I just see the work going. All right. So now I shall invite our technical role players who are the busy, busy role players behind this meeting. They did their job, their effort was just behind the scenes and nobody might acknowledge them. So now I would like to invite our first role player, Grammarian, Presentation Mastery, Level 2, Jacob. Okay, thank you very much, Natalie, for the invitation to present my report. So wait a minute as I'm going to share the screen. Okay, I believe everyone can see it. So this is my grammarian's report for today. So the word of the day today is at full tilt and I I'm glad to announce that a lot of you guys actually adopted this phrase in your speech in some form or another. So the sergeant at arms used it once, the toastmaster of the evening used it twice, the table topic speaker Thomas used it once, the prepared speech speaker number two Carl Young used it twice, the table topics evaluator Sean used it once, Evaluator number two, Yvonne, used it twice. Our general evaluator, Miss Natalie, used it once. Okay, so congratulations and thank you for the full support of the phrase of the day today. Okay, so let's proceed with the good selection of words that I've heard today. Granted, there are a lot more. I cherry picked some of the ones and I have missed out some, so I apologize for that beforehand. So. Number one, full of hostility and skepticism, stipulated schedule. Number three, at the 11th hour, Rome was not built in a single day. On the cusp, I took the road less taken, fallen short, explore the far ends to some extent. Okay, let's move on with our flawed language report. Okay, I have to say it is a tall order for me today to identify the errors of everyone here because simply everyone here has a very impressive command of English. Okay, it is nitpicking at this point to basically find what are the errors that you guys have uh, made throughout this meeting. Okay, so let's get on with it. So let's start with the pronunciation errors. The most prominent pronunciation error I've heard today is the TH sound, okay, for thousand, three, uh, and so on. So I've heard a lot has mispronounced the TH as hard T. So it should be the tip of the tongue placed behind the top front of your teeth. It is th, not t. And I've heard someone mispronounce evening as evening. Okay, the VE in the middle is silent. Hit as hat. Okay, it is not a short syllable. It is a long syllable hit. Community, I heard someone mispronounce it as community. Maybe you're too fast, okay? You skip through the word and it should be community. Broccoli, I've heard someone mispronounce it as broccoli. It's not broccoli, it's broccoli. 
or in some cases we reduce the middle syllable as broccoli breath is not breath okay it's breath it's very brisk okay let's move on okay before i move on with the grammatical errors i will i've added a special column here it's the lexical errors errors in the word level okay so misuse words so here are some of the examples i've heard someone said a causal event and use the sentence connector subsequently and then you mention the effect it should be consequently okay the effect is a consequence so you should use consequently not subsequently subsequently means next okay it does not mean hence okay uneligible okay this is straight up wrong it is ineligible today is a special speech okay your speech today is a special speech but today is a special occasion a pitless mountain i've never heard of that you can go up and up okay just simply use the phrase a never ending hike all right so here are some of the grammatical errors i will pick some of it due to the time constraint i have to say a lot of the grammatical errors comes down to very minute errors it's just the plural singular nouns and also the verb to be mistakes okay so let me catch some of it green light will light up green light will be lighted up or will be displayed uh, 30 second 30 seconds okay let me pick the prominent ones i personally think that i personal think that it should be an adverb i personally think that one of the biggest advantage you are choosing one out of tons of advantages so it should be a plural noun there one of the biggest advantages it really clear on what you're saying about you forgot the verb to be it is really clear on what you're saying about okay very good job well done it is a very redundant phrase it should be very good job or job well done so here are some of the stray comments i managed to catch okay a good selection of topics for the table topic session okay very nice uh phrases very nice quotes for our table topics uh, exemplary demonstration by the timer i noticed that you use ordinal numbers at the fourth minute instead of at four minutes which is one of the most common errors i've caught in other toastmasters club okay so i would like to give my special compliments uh commendation to carl young okay you displayed one of the most impressive commands of english today in the entire meeting you have very good pronunciation inflection you have really good reduction to make your words feel fluid and feel very natural sounding because we asians tend to emphasize every syllable hard okay and sometimes we need to reduce some of the syllables and you nailed that perfectly and i found that you have a flair in creating very expressive sentences so these are my observations and back to you general evaluator sorry for the overtime no worries we, we did overtime sometimes it is avoid it is unavoidable sometimes but i think you did a really great job jacob right now i would like to invite our accountant Aster on stage hold on that i can hear me Hello, could you guys see it? Can you see the our content report? All right, okay, good. So today, uh, it's so early. Okay, today we've used the most word is so. So is mostly used at 89. And those in blue are those, uh, we and the evaluators basically grammar and the timer. Then the orange is the evaluator, yellow is general evaluator, 
and then the green one is the moderator and the MC. Okay, so you can see here that the count for the most pause filler will be, I think it's on, oh, it's Goi Shuxian, 21 pause fillers, that's a lot. And the least will be Joshua and then Joshua, Sing En, and Ming Kang. That's a lot of so. Okay, so I'll go throughout everyone quickly. Jacob Ku says, um, once, or uh, two, okay, okay, is three, so is 12. Total pause filler is 17. Go, Goi, Shuk, Xian, so 21. Hil, Hilman, Hisham, so five. Kim, Teng, two. So three, basically five to total pause fillers. Yvonne, P, so two. Koi Min, um, one, ah, uh, one, er, uh, three, so three. Kenneth, one for um, so is three. Natalie's used um, three, so two. Sing En, used um, two, er, uh, two, and, 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 two, so one. Ming Kang use so one, Kah Moon use ah two and an N one so seven. Joshua Lim one and an N one so one. Samia Firozi, the most for the speaker, um seven or seven so ten. Twenty four pause fillers. Thomas Lim so three. Sean. Can for um er uh, two so seven Kyle Young um one er uh, two so nine the total for everything is one hundred and forty that's all back to you January Thank you, Arthur, for the very detailed outcome report. And I really appreciate that you display all of the specific post failures so that we understand what um, what our post failure is. All right, and lastly, let us invite our timer to provide his timer report. Let's invite Dynamic Leadership Level 2 Human. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you, our general evaluator. So this is my report. Our meeting called to order at seven, four minutes, and the TME starts his first speech at 7, 8 p.m. Then the table topic session started at 7, 19 p.m. So as for table topic session, we have four speakers all together. All of you need to speak around one to two minutes. Our first speaker, Joshua Lim, took one minute, 41 seconds. Second speaker, Jing En, one minute, 16 seconds. Third speaker, Thomas Lim, one minute, 43 seconds. And our last speaker of table topic session, Go Shun Zian, two minutes, six seconds. Now moving on to our project speakers, project speaker one, Carmen, six minutes, 53 seconds. Project speaker two, Toastmaster Skull, since I got disconnected on your speech for multiple times, so by estimation, it's way more than nine minutes. Please practice your timing of your speech before the meeting. And our third speakers, Toastmaster Samia, 10 minutes, 19 seconds. And then our moving on to the evaluation session. Our table topic evaluators, Toastmaster Scanners, three minutes, 30, 25 seconds. Evaluators two, Toastmasters Yvonne, three minutes, 25 seconds. Evaluate three, Evaluator three, Toastmasters Quimin, four minutes, 15 seconds. And for our technical role players, our grammarian, six minutes, 58 seconds. Our counter, two minutes. 44 seconds and for me I need to spoke about one to two minutes I took one minute 56 seconds back to you uh, thank you human he even timed his own time <laughs> there was a great effort all right so all of our technical role players have given their reports and now it's my turn as a general evaluator all right so I would like to just describe one phrase that I would like to describe for UM Toastmasters Club UM Toastmasters Club meeting is at 
First of all, I want to talk about the atmosphere. When I just enter the room, I can I can hear hear the music to prevent the awkwardness. I know, and then there are slides being displayed, which we help us to visualize what is going to happen next and tells the guests to rename themselves. And then when I entered the room, the BPE greeted me friendly and they approached the guests actively. They initiated the conversation first. So this is really beneficial for the club as well because some of the guests may be too quiet and this really helps in increasing the membership. So our SAA and Zoom master, Ming Kang, he did a really great job too because he had gained the consent from the floor to record the whole meeting. And then he also provided me with the amendment in the agenda. And I was really well informed for the amendment in the agenda even before the meeting starts and during the meeting. And the ground rules that he provided are all perfect. All of wow. them are the important points. And as for the opening address, it's also Ming Kang. Yeah. I really enjoy your opening address and I, really appreciate that you, uh, you were being true to yourself, you exposed your vulnerability. You say that, are you sure that you really love this country using the hashtags? I really like your personal stories. And in turn, you talk about, you twist, uh, you twist the whole speech into providing a key message to us, which is to give assurance and forgive others. And I also appreciate that you welcome all of the guests and to acknowledge their presence. And next is our TME, Goy. He's very energetic. And then I really like the theme that he chose, Malaysian time. They can give us two kind of meanings. The first meaning is to indicate that Malaysian always comes late. And the other meaning is that Malaysian time, because we have just went past our Malaysian, they're happy Malaysian, they're happy independence. So I really like this kind of theme that have two meanings. Kudos to you. And I also appreciate that you have displayed the slides with the background of the clubs and the history of Toastmasters. And next is our grammarian. Yours, I really I really appreciate that you display the whole word of the, the phrase of the day in your virtual background so that the audience are aware of are aware of what is the word of the day. And I also like how you display the synonym and antonyms, which is not that common in other clubs. And next, I would like to talk about our table topic master, Kenting. Wow, the topics were all wonderful and creative. And I also like that how you provide those encouraging comments to show your active listening when the speakers have finished their speeches. And I also, this is the first time that I've seen the, the club using the wheels of name method. And it's a really creative way. This is my first time. And I really enjoy using this wheel of name method. It's like giving me a, very, a great expression, impression. But here's my humble suggestion. I'm not sure whether your club uses this wheel of names method regularly, because if you use it regularly, um, it might um, prevent the audience that would like to volunteer themselves to take part in table topics. Okay, for example, if an audience, he, he specifically attend today's meeting for table topic session, but the wheel turn, 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 <laughs> and didn't turn to his or her name, and then he can't volunteer. And it's just my only concern. But if you just once, if you use it for once for a while, then it should be totally fine. And for the timing explanation, um, it should be one minute in green color and one minute 30 seconds in amber and two minutes in red. But you just corrected your own mistake and it's very good. And all of the table topic speakers were brilliant. I really enjoyed your speech. And during the break session, I can see that, wow, the relationship between the members are very close and everyone is very friendly. There's, there's no pause during the break session. But just my humble suggestion is that perhaps for the executive committees or the TME, you could try to speak with non-Toastmaster guests to prevent them from being left out, okay? I know that it is very exciting to talk with your own friends, but sometimes we also need to consider the feelings of our non-Toastmasters guests. And after the break, the meeting is restarted on time, which is very good. And the project speech speakers were also brilliant. I learned a lot from them. Carmen told me, told us the history of UM Toastmasters Club, and Kai shared his experience on leadership, and Samia shared her wonderful journey in Toastmasters. The evaluators and other technical role players, like our R counters, our timers, were all wonderful. And I really like how your club let letting the timer to display the, the clock in the visual breakout with the counting down thingy. I think this is the first time I attended a club meeting that contains this because this really provides a very great visualization for the speakers to know that how much time they have spent. 
Although there's a few minutes delay, perhaps a five minutes delay for the whole schedule, but I think that the whole meeting is quite smooth. And I really appreciate that your club uses the virtual background that contain the theme of the day. And the agenda overall is great. The agenda contained all of the important things and then amendment, amendments are notified on time. Although there is some error in the notes for the evaluator, but your executive committee managed to handle it and provide it with our members and me the correct ones. So in summary, I enjoyed a lot from today's meeting and I also learned a lot and I can't wait to attend your club's next meeting. And that's all from me. I shall pass this ball to our TME. Oh, TME. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you for the very comprehensive report by both our Madam General Evaluator and also our role players. All right, <clears throat> so now it's the last stretch and it's our award-giving ceremony. <clears throat> All right, so first up, we have our best table topic speaker. So who would be the best table topic speaker for tonight? So, drum rolls, please. Uh, Mika, are you ready? Huh? Give me a second, I'm trying to share and right. yeah, trying to make it full screen. Take the three dots. Three dots. Uh. Where's the three dots? The upper right corner. Yeah, upper right. Yeah, and present. Present, All right. yeah. Okay, All right. So the best table topic speaker goes to, drum rolls please. Postmaster Thomas Lim, congratulations. All right, next we have our best prepared speech speaker. So who would it be? Drum rolls. Best prepared speech speaker goes to Postmaster Kaman, congratulations. Is we have our best speech evaluator. So the best speech evaluator goes to drum rolls, please. Postmaster Yvonne, congratulations. All right. Last but not least, we would like to present a token of appreciation to our Madam General Evaluator for tonight, Postmaster Natalie. All right. Thank you for being our general evaluator for tonight. Right, so that marks the end of the award giving ceremony. Now I will pass the floor back to our president. All right, it's me again to deliver my final closing speech. Please give me a moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters and guests, we have come to an end of this wonderful Toastmaster meeting, meeting 318 University Malaya Toastmaster Club. So before my closing speech, I will have a few announcements to make. Um, number one, so our club, Unity Malaya Toastmaster Club, is looking for contest chair for our international speech and evaluation contest potentially happening on December semester break. So any members who are interested in this will, uh, can approach me via WhatsApp. Let me know you are interested. I will find you immediately. <laughs> All right, and second announcement, there is one campaign going on in District 51. My goal, my growth, my stories with Toastmasters. It's a very um, interesting video contest or story contest. I personally, I would like to join. I would like to also share this to all of you so that I can, it's not like I want to like, uh, yeah, I just want to promote because I think it's a very fun thing to do, right? So can then you share a link to the chat box and you can go take a look at it. It's on Facebook. Third announcement is um we also would like to hear from you uh, our meeting feedback. So instead of um not only that we have feedback for speakers, we only we have also feedback for the whole meeting. So can think is again going to send a link to the chat box so you guys can fill in the Google form to give feedback to us so we can improve it better. 
The last announcement is um, our next Toastmaster of the evening will be Toastmaster Lucy Tai. She's doing her Manage Online Meetings project, so she decided to be the Toastmaster of the evening. So please give support and encouragement to Lucy for trying out this. I think it's, it's, it's her first time doing TME, so yeah, good job. And I hope to see the great results. All right, here's my closing speech. Ladies and gentlemen, the odds of me giving a closing speech here is pretty unlikely without this magical thing for Toastmasters. The odds of we gathering here today together is pretty unlikely without this magical thing called Toastmasters. Every time in the end of a meeting, or event, or activity, I, was, I always think, what's my goal? What's my goal for the event, for the meeting, for the activity? Have I achieved my goal? What's my goal of joining Toastmasters and am I on track of achieving that? Am I still on track? When I was appointed as a club officer. Now sometimes it's an inevitable to get lost and skill, but as long as you are still on track, nothing's gonna let you down. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to think I would like you to think. Now think, what's your goal upon joining this meeting? Have you achieved your goal? What school your part what school your track part? What's your goal in your life? Are you Stay on track. Again, I would like to thank everyone for joining this meeting and keeping it on the tilt. And I'm now officially called this meeting adjourned.